Hello, welcome to this edition of Intelligent Video. Today, I'm your host, Steve Vonar from Intelvid Research. Join us on the show is Lionel Brignier, Chief Product Officer over at Vidion. Welcome, Lionel. Hi, Steve. Thanks for having me. Hey, it's uh, great to have you on the show. We know Vidion is a, a purveyor of solutions that help create really high-quality uh, video in venues like sporting arenas, but uh, we're seeing some expansion of Vidion's uh, positioning and capabilities over time. Tell us a little bit about where uh, you folks are taking Vidion these days. Yeah, what we're doing is those uh, little devices, which are basically edge computing devices. So we sit at the source next to the camera and we encode the content, but we also prepare the content to make your video workflow easier and faster. Really applying edge computing uh, to enable video AI, I guess. Yes, absolutely. We do. We can enable any kind of application. The secret sauce we have is that we can run Docker containers on this uh, device. And the heart of this device is a Qualcomm Snapdragon chip so, you know, it has some AI capacity and uh, we can make the stream really more intelligent or augment the uh, video stream with intelligent data. And uh, I guess when you're able to do that on the edge, that's a little bit different than doing it in large language models in the cloud. What are the advantages of doing uh, video AI on the edge? Yeah, we're not really competing with cloud workflows. We are more in a hybrid uh, world where uh, there are some things that you can do at the edge, at the source edge, uh, that make it more affordable. You know, the, the cloud is great and you have this infinite capacity for computing, especially for uh, AI, you know, all the, uh, all the training, the uh, LLM uh, models that you want to train in the cloud that, that will stay in the cloud. But once you have your model trained, you can run the inferences on the uh, edge uh, device at the source because it will be much cheaper and it will be much faster with lower latency. And when we talk about, you are talking about where we excel in uh, sport applications, we need to have very high quality, but also very low latency for the, uh, the video applications. So let's turn our attention to use cases then. How do we see the uh, uh, this type of edge computing capability being put to use by organizations and day-to-day -day business activities? Le, yes, uh, again, for sports uh, applications, one of our customers, they have to uh, not only stream uh, the games, but they have to monetize the games. And the traditional way of monetizing uh, hockey games in that example was to have someone with a big red button and insert the ad markers so that you can have ad breaks in a game. That's great when you're a tier one uh, national league provider because you can afford that. If you're a tier two uh, sports provider, you might not be able to have someone in every stadium to do that. So we solved that issue uh, by uh, using uh, a Docker container running on the uh, on the video on device, uh, the live edge device, where we uh, can get some uh, sources of data. Uh, it's a play by play a description of the hockey game and we know when it's the end of the first third of the game and the end of the second third of the game so we know there is an intermission we know we have a five minutes intermission and we automatically completely autonomously intelligently insert scully 35 markers to tell the uh that's the beginning and the end of the ad breaks completely automatically in hundreds of stadiums that's uh, an awesome capability and really uh, uh, streamlines the process of doing that type of video production. If you're able to throw in uh, uh, ad breaks without any human intervention, that really is a cost savings for some of these uh, tier two uh, broadcasters. Yes, it's all about cost saving uh, and again, making it faster or with uh, less latency. What we are replacing is not a cloud application uh, not a human, but a combination of a single purpose encoder, sometimes uh, a laptop with a software like OBS or, you know, any uh, kind of graphic overlay that you could uh, add downstream the uh, encoding uh, and a human operator who has to manage all of that. And the problem with human operators, the problem with uh, laptops is they are not easily um, 
you, you cannot have automatic redundancy. You know, uh, when someone doesn't show up, uh, especially when we talk about sports in various arenas, uh, sometimes you have people who are changing because you cannot afford to send the same crew to every uh, game in the in the season. Again, if you're a tier one sport provider, you might afford to do that. If you're a tier two, tier three provider, you have to uh, cope with uh, local people. So you have to train them. You have to train them on uh, the software that is going to run on the laptop. The laptop, it's not going to be the same OS. It's not going to be the same version of the software. Uh, so. It, it's not something you can easily replicate when you have hundreds of locations to manage. Using edge computing devices at the source makes it unique. We have a cloud uh, control platform where we can control, but also configure and make sure we have the same parameters and the same configuration in every stadium that is managed uh, for the application. It can be completely remotely controlled by the same crew all the time. Um, that's that's really interesting. And with the uh, uh, with your Live Edge family of appliances, uh, I know that you've just introduced a, a new device that has a significant upgrade in horsepower. And uh, you're going a little against uh, against the grain there. Uh, a lot of people in the AI realm using uh, uh, chips from uh, Nvidia, but uh, this new device uh, from Vidion incorporates uh, the the Qualcomm chip that's also used in the Galaxy S22 cell phone. Uh, why, why do you choose uh, that one as opposed to going the tried and true AI route that everybody else does with the NVIDIA chip? Well, so that's true. What we have here, it's a Snapdragon uh, 865. So as you say, the same as what we see in Samsung uh, smartphones. Uh, we really like uh, those uh, chips because it's a good balance uh, between uh, computing capacity but also video capacity, video encoding capacity. If we want to have ultra latency for encoding, we need to do the encoding with the hardware capacity of the chip and uh, AI ML capacities. NVIDIA, they have very good GPUs. They have very good uh, Jetson AI ML dedicated chips, uh, but I don't know if they have the same balance between the three um, uh, types of uh, workflows we want to um, uh, enable with our device. I also want to stress out the fact that uh, from a consumption uh, perspective, energy consumption, energy efficiency, those devices are extremely low power. And we can do all that uh, encoding, processing, running AI inferences uh, with less than five watts per channel when we have uh, two channels this, in this kind of device. So it's also something we need to take into account because it's not only the cost of the device, but it's also the cost of running those video workflows. We've seen several customers, especially in Europe, where in the past two years, the, their energy bill has just been through the roof. And when you can replace a you know, traditional encoder or a uh, PC, Intel, AMD based encoder that would consume like 30 watts per channel with just the encoding, whereas you can have your whole edge computing device with five watts per channel. Uh, we, we think it's a very good hardware solution, but I'm not opposed to other uh, vendors, you know, uh, and let's see what's the future is going to be for AIML applications. Yeah, it's uh, uh, in in your particular case, you need a little bit of everything, and uh, the Snapdragon uh, fits the bill for what uh, Vidion is trying to do there. Now, uh, uh, when some people hear the term devices or appliances, they start thinking about uh, the big upfront capital expense that's uh, associated with implementing uh, hardware uh, in this type of uh, format. How how's Vidion addressing that issue of of uh, the the capex uh, concerns about implementing solutions uh, that are hardware? We're based like this. Yeah, so we're, I mean, the industry is getting away from the CapEx model because, you know, a lot of video workflows are now cloud based and it's the OpEx model that is becoming the new norm. The way we see it is that we are not selling an appliance, we're selling a solution. This solution has a hardware component, but also a software uh, part of the, uh, in the solution. So the software part will be either something that is provided by Vidion. So uh, we use Docker containers and let's say we have three types of Docker containers. We have the native ones that are provided by Vidion. We have some third party 
uh, Docker containers that expand the capacity for uh, our customers that are provided by partners like Zixi, uh, NetInsight, uh, you know, where we can get into a, a bigger ecosystem. And we have containers that can be developed by uh, our customers to fit the needs they have for their very specific workflow. Typically what I was uh, explaining for uh, monetizing uh, hockey games. So you have all that software part that is included in the solution. On top of that, we provide upgrades. We have this cloud control platform that can manage um, a, a fleet of uh, devices. And that's why we think the uh, OPEX model can work. It's actually easier to compare uh, the money you can save on the edge computing device versus public clouds offerings if you do an Apple to Apple comparison with OPEX to OPEX comparison. When we look at uh, what Vidion is doing in terms of business models, uh, uh, some hardware makers might try to uh, create all the applications for the devices themselves. Do you see yourself as the sole creator of applications for use on uh, uh, your devices, or, or are you actively recruiting uh, uh, video vendor partners? Yeah, we are actively recruiting partners all the time because, again, what we what we are selling what we're providing to the industry is a common platform that can be used in any kind of video application and the more we can uh, embrace uh, the capacities that can be done at the source uh, edge uh, the better it's going to be and we we want to uh, provide a toolkit uh, so that our customers but also partners uh, like Zixi, like NetInsight uh like easy uh like touch trend i mean we cast labs uh, we have a, a lot of partners who have developed their own docker container running at the source edge uh to provide uh, additional capacities compared to what uh customers would today do uh downstream in the in the value chain uh it's really as often as possible again we're using docker containers we have um sample code that is freely available on our github page and we 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 want to help anyone who's interested uh in having their applications running at the source edge awesome awesome so uh before i let you go let's let's take a look into the crystal ball maybe look uh three to five years down the line uh paint a picture of what you see happening uh, from an edge computing versus the the large language model solutions uh can these two worlds of uh um, uh, edge video AI and uh, you know, data center LLM solutions. Uh, can those coexist? Oh, I think they will coexist. It's uh, they have to coexist because again, you cannot do everything with LLM models in the cloud because it's too expensive and the latency is sometimes too high. Uh, I also think there is a lot of buzz right now on uh, generative AI ML. And I think this kind of uh, capacity is great for uh, LLM. And you can absolutely imagine a world in three years from now where you can have ads that will be completely created by AI models and completely tuned to uh, the type of content or the type of audience, or maybe even personalized uh, ads that would be completely generated by AI models. And those are things that will be done through LLM and generative, generative AI um, inferences. Uh, but on the flip side, you still need to uh, insert those ads within your um, user experience uh, and, and, and type of um, uh, you, you, you want your audience to be uh, interested in what they're seeing and engaged. And to, again, have this kind of engagement, uh, you need to do that at the, at the source because you want to have more data, more sources of uh, data. You can generate also data in real time. Uh, let's get another example in, in sports. You know, this year, uh, LeBron James became the most successful basketball player with the highest number of uh, points uh, ever. Uh, that's a once in a lifetime opportunity to monetize content. And uh, LeBron James, he has probably a partnership with 
Nike or Jordan uh, choose uh, a brand. So there is a once in a lifetime opportunity to have a personalized ad where Nike can sell the uh, LeBron James uh, shoes with a specific uh, branding for that historic shot that he's making. And you can imagine that you can do that uh, when you have a once in a lifetime event, but this kind of personalization of making the ads completely relevant to uh, the, the event, the sport game you're watching can be absolutely generalized with any tier one, tier two, tier three content. If you deploy those AI ML uh, characterization capabilities uh, at the at the source level. Well, you have me convinced it's different flavors of AI for different types of applications. And uh, uh, it's going to be fun to watch the industry evolve uh, into those use cases. Uh, Lionel Brignier from Vidion, the chief product officer over there. Thanks so much for taking the time to, to visit with us today. Thanks, Steve. Have a great day. And our thanks goes out to you joining us for today's episode. Be sure to click on the link right below to uh, subscribe to future editions of Intelligent Video Today to get access to more thought leadership from uh, executives in the industry like Lionel Brignier. For Intelligent Research and Intelligent Video Today, I'm Steve Onderhaar. Thanks for your time. Thank you.